a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. You'll find your full AccuWeather forecast right up along the top of your CNC local news homepage. Well, it's all over, including the shouting and the highest profile Rochester area political campaign ended up just as the final Siena College poll called it. Democrat Louise Slaughter delivered a convincing win over Republican Maggie Brooks to keep her job in Congress. With all districts counted, the Fairport Democrat beat the Webster Republican by 53 to 47 percent. For Brooks, it was the first time she's lost an election since beginning her political career. For Slaughter, it was vindication of her 26-year record in the House of Representatives and her high favorable rating among voters. Brooks conceded, saying she still holds the greatest job in Monroe County. It is a blessing in my life to be able to serve this community in such a significant way. And I want to thank everyone in, in the community that supported me. And a short time later, Louise Slaughter took the podium at the Democratic election headquarters, sounding more like she had just beaten Republican strategist Karl Rove than her actual opponent. We stood our ground. We stood up to it again, as I said, we beat Ohio. Rove's Crossroads GPS Super PAC funded a stream of negative advertising aimed at slaughter during the campaign. We don't have a demographic breakdown on the unofficial vote count from Tuesday night, but in last week's Siena poll, Louise Slaughter benefited from a significant gender gap with women strongly favoring her, 55 to 38 percent. Men sided with slaughter, but by a smaller margin, 48 to 46 percent. The Monroe County Board of Elections says 72 percent of eligible voters went to the polls this election day, slightly fewer than the 75 percent who voted in the last presidential election four years ago. And those voters went strongly for President Barack Obama, 58 percent for Obama to 40 percent for Governor Mitt Romney, with the rest divided among the several minor party candidates. In that, Rochester area residents followed the New York State trend. New York voted strongly for the president, and that was never in doubt, as New York State has 2.8 million registered Republicans, 5.6 million registered Democrats. Continuing with the top of the ticket, Democrat Kirsten Gillibrand waltzed into a full-year term in the United States Senate, easily beating Republican Wendy Long by a large enough margin that media outlets felt comfortable enough to call the race just seconds after the polls closed Tuesday night. Gillibrand won a special election in 2010 to fill the seat left vacant when Hillary Clinton became Secretary of State. And Gillibrand, by the way, took more than 66% of the Rochester area vote. The other congressional campaign attracting a lot of interest locally saw freshman Democrat Kathy Hochul apparently defeated by former Erie County Executive Republican Chris Collins. And we say apparently because Collins leads in the raw numbers with just over 4,000 votes. That's in the 27th Congressional District, which now covers most of the Buffalo area and parts of eight western New York counties. Collins declared victory at one Wednesday morning, but there are still 30,000 absentee ballots that have to be counted. That could take two weeks. Just over half of those absentee ballots were requested by registered Republicans, which means they're not likely to change the result. But the election can't be certified until those remaining paper ballots are counted. Collins declared victory to supporters in Buffalo shortly before 1 o'clock Wednesday morning. And this result, by the way, is also right in line with what the Siena College research people found in their final poll on the election last week. Collins leading Hochul by a point, the outcome too close to predict. The New York State Senate seat, left vacant by Senator Jim Alisi's retirement, will go back to Democratic hands. Democrat and Monroe County legislator Ted O'Brien beat Assemblyman Sean Hanna, who had the Republican and Conservative Party lines, by 54 to 46 percent. Outside interests put money into negative ads against both candidates in that race. Jumping over to the west side of Monroe County, Republican Joe Robach of Greece ran unopposed for the 56th Senate District. Nearly 75,000 people voted for him. 
The most watched campaign for state assembly in the Rochester area turned out to be a replay of 2010. First-term incumbent Republican Mark Johns beat former Assemblyman David Kuhn, a Democrat who tried to win back the 135th district seat. He lost to Johns two years ago. Kuhn narrowly lost to Johns in 2010 in the East Side District, and he lost narrowly this time to 51 to 49 percent. And checking the other assembly races, conservative talk show host Bill Nojay took 52 percent of the vote in the 133rd district, beating Democrat Randolph Weaver and conservative Richard Burke in a three-way race. That district lies south of Rochester. Assemblyman Bill Rylick, who doubles as Monroe County's Republican Party chairman, ran unopposed on the GOP line in the 134th district in Greece. And his mirror image on the east side of the Genesee River, Assemblyman and Monroe County Democratic Party Chairman Joe Morelli won unopposed on the Democratic Party line in Arundequoit. In the city of Rochester, veteran Assemblyman David Gant overwhelmingly won re-election as a Democrat against Green Party candidate Andrew Langston, 88% to 12%. There was one countywide race for Rochester area voters this fall. Monroe County Clerk Cheryl Donolfo, Republican, was easily re-elected over Democrat Susan Vandervoort, Donolfo winning by nearly 20 points. And this wasn't supposed to be an election year for the Monroe County Legislature, but a special election was held for a vacant seat in Arundequoit. Legislator Stephanie Aldersley, a Democrat who left her seat on the Arundequoit Town Board to fill the vacancy pending the election, lost. She was beaten by Republican and conservative Joe Carbone. Democrat Irena Skrobach beat Republican Peter Kelderhouse to keep Aldersley's former Arundequoit Town Board seat in the hands of the Democratic Party. There were a few other races of note. Voters in the town of Greece approved adding a fourth justice to the town court to help with a growing caseload. About 35,000 people voted on the local referendum. It passed by a 10-point margin. And here's one guaranteed to require a recount. In East Rochester, Democrat Dennis Greco appears to have beaten Republican and conservative David Bonacci for town justice. Greco's margin of victory was just three votes, 1,196 to 1,193. As we said, recount in the works there for sure. And then before we wrap up, let's take a look at a race we were following to the south of Rochester in Livingston County, mainly because of that neck-and-neck -neck tie between the two Republican candidates who ran in a primary. This was the race for Livingston County District Attorney. It was won by Democratic incumbent Greg McCaffrey, who has held the seat since he was appointed five months ago by Governor Andrew Cuomo. And this is the first time since the 1800s that a Democrat has been the prosecutor in Livingston County. And this happened because it ended up in a three-way race when that Republican primary ended up in a tie between Eric Sheener and Steve Sessler. After every recount and after twice going to court, the Republican Party committee eventually picked Sheener as their candidate, but Sessler stayed on the ballot as a conservative and actively campaigned. That split the vote enough to keep Sheener out of office, and the seat went to the Democrat, Greg McCaffrey. To the left of this window are links and other stories at the bottom of the page in that gray bar, links that you can use. And you can directly post us news items, things that you've written, stuff you want us to know about. We are a community resource at CNC News, so send us your birth announcements, wedding announcements, business openings. We want to put it up here on the news, so next news is as it happens. Updates are when necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.